Hiya, and welcome back to Dawn Chorus. The game that teaches us that we will always find our keys, except when we don't. Anyways, let's just hop right in. We each played one more song, one song more, and now the break is slowly ending. Travis's enthusiasm is unyielding. I bet he could spend the whole day here playing. My second song went a bit better, and I finished it on the first try. Bjorn insisted on playing on the second song on a normal difficulty, and unsurprisingly struggled with it even more than the first one. After he finished, we watched Lake finish another song with a near-perfect score. Now Travis is playing again while the rest sits around and, watch and rests. Lake and Jorgen are next to each other on the sofa while Bjorn is slumped in a chair. Talk with Lake and Jorgen, or talk with Bjorn. Yeah, yeah, see, uh... I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, that's the plan. We're going to finish Devin's update because I imagine there's not too many more. There's not too much more content in his route. And then we'll do Miko. Anyways, let's talk to the bear. To the bear. I approach Bjorn, but he doesn't notice me. Looking at his open paws. Hey, what's up? Oh, Arvo. Hi there. Not much. I'm just chilling. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. He doesn't seem to be in the mood for a conversation. I thought you might like some company. It got pretty quiet after the second track, and I was wondering what's up. If you, to be alone, if you prefer to be alone, then I'll sleep. Sorry. Don't be silly, Arvo. And everything's fine, don't worry. Just play and put me in a bit of a bad mood. I was hoping nobody would notice, though. I didn't want to ruin your fun. Oh, I thought we were all having fun. Well, you're all good at that game. Aw, Bjorn. Are you sad because you fucking suck at the game? It's okay, baby girl. We're all bad at something. For example, I'm apparently bad at speaking English. <laughs> you really said skill issue. Well, you're all good at that game. I'm not. All of us have already played it before, though. If you had some time to practice like the rest of us, you'd do much better. I guess, but it doesn't feel good seeing you play so effortlessly while I struggle to finish a song on normal. I can't help it, sorry. I sit down next to him on the floor and lean against his chair. I understand it well. I felt the same about music lessons. I felt so bad that I stopped putting any effort into them, because at least then I could say I'm bad at playing because I'm not trying. It's not a contest, though. We're here to have a good time! Yeah, but it would be nice to be good at some, you know? Hang on, I'm putting on gloves. Why? I don't know. I just feel like wearing gloves. Arvo needs to stop eating pianos. He does. These gloves are fucking comfortable. I mean, artist gloves. They're so fucking comfortable. But it would have been asked to be good at some, you know? I'm sure you are, even if you don't know it yet. I know it's not an easy thing to do, but when it's your turn, try to forget about us and just play for fun, okay? I touch his arm reassuringly. Hoping that he won't misunderstand the gesture, but he smiles back at me. By the way, how did you like the lecture? Well, they were quite interesting and informative, but I'd be lying if I said I followed everything they were saying. I find learning from books much easier. I just end up daydreaming whenever I try to listen to lectures. But I took a pack of gingerbreads and chocolate with me, so at least I had a sweet time. I would gladly share it with you, but I didn't see where you were sitting. Aw, oh, and gingerbreads and chocolate sounds nice. I don't think I've had any before. How do they look? It's a Polish treat. They're great. They're soft and spongy. I love them. I have a few more packs in my room. I can treat you some later. Whoa, I'm done! You want to play again, Bjorn? Sure thing. We wrapped up soon after that. Lake went back to his room to return his headset. Jorgen went to the cafeteria for a lecture while Travis and Bjorn went back to their rooms. I joined Jorgen, not wanting to miss the next lecture. How many are there left? Three, I think. It's going to be a long day. Chocolate? Chocolate! Chocolate! Oh god, oh god, I can't get that fucker out of my head. 
you know, you know the guy. You know the guy. Uh, how do I describe him? Um, that that fish, that screaming chocolate from that SpongeBob episode. He's like chocolate, and SpongeBob and Patrick are like, "Geez, dude, come, come the fuck down, come the fuck down." Yeah, we have we have chocolate. Uh, you you want some chocolate? Chocolate. Okay, we're we're gonna go now. And then they talk to that old woman who's just like. Oh, I haven't had chocolate in fucking 69 years. Oh, would you like some? Oh, I'd love a scrumptious piece of chocolate or something. Why Why did I go to Smiling Friends? Why did I go to Smiling Friends? That's, that's basically, that's basically that. Oh, God. Ugh, it's finally over. It's not like it wasn't interesting or informative, but four lectures in a row is a bit much. How'd you like it? I sort of feel bad bringing you here for a lecture more related to my studies. Hey, it was my idea, remember? Don't worry, I wanted to attend and I don't regret it one bit. That's good. I think you are, though. It was a good lecture, even if it wasn't directly related to our studies. The topic was quite fascinating. It never occurred to me how closely cognition is tied to linguistics. Thinking without words is a funny thing. Have you ever tried it? Not consciously. If I knew any language, probably. It's a fun exercise. I recommend it. By the way, do you have any plans now? I'm going to stay here for a moment. I want to ask Devin something. Devin? I mean, Coach Devin. Uh... I need to go back to my room and work on a project. I'm a bit behind with it. Actually, I should go now. I want to be done with it quickly. Yeah, one thing before I go. I'll go with Devin for a swim before dinner. You could join us if you want to. I could use some exercise, yeah. Cool, I'll come by your room around 15, 15 then. Of course, you're free to join too, Miko. Thanks, but swimming is not my forte. You three have fun. Thanks, and see you later. I did some personal reading earlier. I didn't... I didn't check. I turned off. I think I did. Okay. So, would you want to meet later? Yeah, we could go for a short walk after dinner. Or maybe ask Lake if he has anything planned. I don't have any plans yet, but frankly, I would like to spend some time with Devin. After we opened up yesterday, even if it was just a bit, I feel like we made some sort of connection, and I don't want to lose it. Good idea. We have a free evening, so I'm sure Lake thought of something already. Miko stands up and joins the stream of students leaving the cafeteria, his fluffy tail swaying behind him. I wait until the room is mostly empty before I approach the panther. He's unplugging the projector, looking somewhat bored or maybe just tired. But sitting here for six hours watching the lectures on hard sciences couldn't have been too thrilling for him. The mop is scheming, oh no. Devin? Orvo? How are you doing? I'm rather tired. Oh, I'm good. Thanks for asking. How about you? Enjoy the Wait, what? You seem rather tired. Oh, I'm good. Thanks for asking. How about you? Enjoy the lectures? I did. Quite a lot. Too bad we couldn't be there, but the app asking for questions was really neat. Yeah, what? it all went surprisingly smoothly. I was ready for a plague of technical issues, but in the end, I had next to nothing to do. The lectures were clear and interesting enough that I had no problem following. Really? It's time to drink water. Career in natural sciences? The it's time to drink that was water. no easy material. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. Nope, never. I don't think it'd be a right choice for me. I'm happy I got the job I have now. The lecturers did a great job of explaining everything clearly. If only my teachers were this talented and patient. Anyway, do you need any help here? <sighs> oh no, there is not much to do left. Thank you, though. I know you want to make yourself useful, but I really can't let you help me with everything. Go ahead and have some fun before dinner. I'll be busy until then. The snowplow has already arrived, and the road to the town is now clear, and they need me at the reception for in a short while. Devin looks to the side, hesitating for a moment before replying. Actually, I plan to go for a short swim with the rune before that at 15.15. If you feel up for it, you could join us for some exercise. If you do, I'll count that as extra credit. Ah, rune invited me already. Sounds like a nice idea, yeah. Just bring your swimwear this time. I blush immediately, remembering my yesterday's faux pas. 
Sure thing. Sorry about the last time. I don't know what I was thinking. Everything's fine. Rune explained the situation to me afterwards. So, see you there. Full time. Woo! Time to go blub blub. Yeah! See you there. Yeah, thank you. Looks like I have two hours of free time ahead of me. I guess I'll go to my room for now and see what to do next. And here I am again, within the four walls that serve as my temporary home. Like a snake shedding its skin, I can finally take off any masks I wear around others. I'm not tired, but my head feels empty. The lectures drained me completely of any mental energy. I walk straight to my bed and sit down on the edge with a loud creak. Oh, what I'd give to have a mattress this nice in my own room back in the dorm. Sprawling out onto the bed, I look up at the ceiling. I should write down some notes from the lectures, but I don't feel like doing it now. I don't really feel like doing anything, to be honest. I'm feeling a bit lost for some reason. As if I left a part of me somewhere and can't find it now. I lift my arm in front of me just to see if I still can, and then open my eyes to look at my outstretched palm. Well, just like... <sighs> Dude, why can't I stop fucking yawning? Why can't I stop doing that? I'd greatly appreciate it. I felt just like usual a few moments ago, so where did this sudden emptiness come from? The patterns in the woods start feeling familiar to me, a sign that this room really is mine. I trace them with my eyes, wondering how old this building is. Probably not too old, maybe from the 50s or 60s. <laughs> See, I'd have too much act I'd have too much fun actually swimming. Scream the yawns out. Probably not too old, pro maybe from the 50s or 60s. Either way, it's all nicely renovated, but the old rustic design still shows in places, adding some charm. Crazy how Norway went from being one of the poorest countries in Europe to one of the richest. Creme de la creme of places to live within just a few decades. Just a hundred years ago, Norwegians were massively emigrating to the US to escape the famine. And now Norway is the place people immigrate to. Buildings like this are a reflection of the turbulent history of the country and then the prosperity that came after it. Maybe I should have studied architecture instead, or interior design. Cognitive science is interesting, but it doesn't really satisfy the artistic part of me. Thankfully, I have photography. I just wish I had more time for it. And that earning money with it would be easier. I always try becoming an events photographer, but it's hard without any experience. How are 18 and 19 year old kids supposed to decide what they want to do for the rest of their lives? Sometimes I wonder if the path I chose for myself was right for me. Maybe I'm making all the wrong choices. How am I supposed to know if I'll enjoy the life I'm working for? Someone laughs outside, shouting something to their friends. Imagine them running around and jumping into the snow, all dressed in colorful coats. Out of nowhere, I start feeling like... I, out of nowhere, I start feeling like doing some push-ups. That'd be silly, though. Says I'm supposed to meet Devin and Rune at the swimming pool soon. I don't want to tire myself out before that. The thought warms me with, from within, and I stand up and stretch, groaning. I think I'll just read a book for now. That should occupy my time until it's time to head for the swimming pool. Grab the one I was reading on the bus and get comfy on the bed, opening the book where I'd last finished reading. The book tells a simple story, but it's well written and engaging. It's about a guy trying to get back to his hometown for his mother's funeral, but it's not sad. It's just reflective. If you can't swim, then just waterbend. Become a waterbender! Yes! A few years earlier, his mother threw him out, and since then he has been living with an artistic collective in the desert. Hitchhiking his way through the country... He thinks of his life back when he was living with his family, and the time he spent apart from them, wondering what went wrong with their relationship and why. I'm halfway through it already, but frankly, I don't want it to end. Huh? Stand up from the bed, walk to the door, and open it. Hey, are you ready? It's almost 15.15, so I came to fetch ya. Uh, can you wait for me for a moment? I started reading a book and I forgot to look for my swimming shorts. Oh, sure. I'll be back in a moment. Close the door and sigh heavily. Ugh, really got into the book. Part of me is still there, somewhere between the pages, living the characters' lives. But for now, I need to shake it off and focus on the task at paw. Yeah, that's the wrong avatar, I'm sorry. What was I supposed to do? Uh, yeah, yeah, grab a towel and my swimming shorts. I find both quickly and leave the room with them, joining Rune outside. So, Arvo. Oh my god, thank you for the- thank you for the raid! Welcome! 
Darva, how did yesterday evening go? I'm happy to see you befriending Devin. The guy needs more friends than just me. We've had supper in Devin's room and talked a while. Oh, and I helped her with the telescopes earlier. <sighs> Why can't I stop fucking yawning, body? It would be great. I would greatly appreciate it if you could stop yawning. Thank you. Thank you. That's pretty much it. It wasn't a very eventful evening. Why does he have problems finding friends here? I thought that there were some muzzlehook groups for expats. That's where I'd be looking for friends if I wasn't at the university. He doesn't want to end up talking mostly with foreigners. He moved here to assimilate, not to end up in an American community, so he tries to stay away from that. I see. <sighs> yeah, funny thing about that, I'll, I'll actually talk about that later. I see. I'm not a Norwegian myself, but my guess is that both Rune and Devin count me as a local. By the way, how did it go with your project? Could be better. I'm stuck on one small thing. I'll get back to it after dinner. Good luck with that. I can't imagine having to work during a camp. Well, it's a science camp after all. Uh oh. Oh, well, hello there. Um, <sighs> I'm just going to go ahead and pull up the sensor because I don't fucking trust it. They're about to get booty butt naked in order to go into the pool. I don't fucking trust it. Because they're about to get booty butt naked to change to go into a pool. Devin is already in the locker room undressing. What took you so long? We don't have much time. Uh, I see you're in your coach mode. Uh, sorry, it's been a stressful day. At least the road to the town is clear now and we got the delivery of food. Otherwise, there would be no dinner today. Sorry, it's my fault. We're late. I forgot to look for my swimwear earlier. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Oh. Um. At least this time you won't terrify Devin with your shameful nudity. You know what? You know what? I'll trust it. I'm, I'm gonna trust it. I'm gonna trust it. Devin turns away from us, continuing to undress. Before he does so, I could swear I saw him blush slightly. Uh, yeah, that wasn't the best idea. It wasn't mine, though. We still have more than half an hour left before dinner, but we have to make it quick and practice hard. Uh oh. Remembering how my legs were on fire the last session, I'm already dreading this. You did quite well the last time, but I know you can do better today. Oh, we're gonna work you hard. Few days of practice, you'll surprise even yourself. I don't like this look. A cold chill of dread runs down my spine. This is going to be a long half an hour. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. A long time ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, <laughs> stop them. When the world needed him most, he vanished. Our ass is going to be used as drums. <laughs> Weaned. It just feels so nice to float on it, half submerged. Like floating in limbo. I don't have to move, I don't have to think, I don't have to perceive. It's as if there was no me. It's comforting, almost meditative. meditative. Orbo, you're right. Hmm? Ah, yes. I'm great. I just need a moment. Are you sure you don't look that great? Yeah, I am! Don't worry, 
I'm coming out now. I swim towards the ladder and climb up, shivering in the air that's colder than I'd like. My breathing has gotten back to normal, thankfully, but my legs still hate me now. I thought you two had finished and went to change already. Yeah, but you stayed behind, so I came to check on you. Well, try to keep trying to keep up with you two wasn't a good idea. In retrospect, I should have known it ended up like this, but my competitive spirit wouldn't let me stay behind. Obviously, I was doomed to failure from the beginning. I stayed far behind them, and I truly tried my best, which was a mistake. Both Rune and I are good swimmers practicing regularly, so don't be too hard on yourself. Still, you did a great job, Arvo. I was really impressed. I didn't know you were pushing yourself this hard, though. Sorry, I should have thought about it before and have a lighter workout this time so that you could keep up with us. It's 100% my fault. I need to tone it down with the competitiveness. Neither of you forced me to try to keep up with you. My guy, don't be embarrassed. Still embarrassed about the whole downloading RT my to my still laptop stands. thing. Feels nice to think he cares about me, at least enough to stay behind and make sure I'm fine. Don't be embarrassed, my guy. Looking into his eyes, I again feel this thin connection between us, a thread of understanding. And oh my, this smile could melt eyes. Taking a step towards me, Devin pats my head gently. I freeze on the spot, but it lasts only for a second. This was nice. My guess is that's his way of showing me he trusts me. It also has a side effect of making me blush hard, but thanks to my patterned fur, it's not that noticeable. Let's go back and change. Dinner will be served soon. Following Devin, I make my way into the locker room. Devin nods at Rune, who goes straight to the showers, while I stop for a moment and lean against my locker. Arvo? You don't look so good. Are you feeling well? I'm just a bit tired. Don't worry. This That was the most intense workout I've had in a long while. Just a bit? You look like you're going to drop dead any minute now. I just need a moment, don't worry. I should do this more often. I warned you, I'm a bit out of shape. My legs don't feel too stable, so I sit down on the bench for a moment. Okay, don't don't feel bad. I'm dead tired, but there's something satisfying about that feeling. That's never a bad idea. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Fuck. Yeah, I'll see you here tomorrow, then. I'm not agreeing yet. I'll see if I'll be able to walk after this. But I'd better go take a shower now. We don't have much time left. Good idea, yes. See you at dinner. Aw, oh, sad. Not wasting any time, I walk up, to, walk up to the closest shower and turn on the water. It's wonderfully refreshing after... It's wonderfully refreshing after the heavily chlorinated water... Pool water. And I drink a mouthful before starting to wash my fur hastily. So I can't help but sneak a few glances at Devin. Rune might be built nicely, but next to the panther, he looks almost unimpressive. I don't know how much the feline had to exercise to look like this, but he, sh but he for sure dedicated a huge portion of his life to it. it. Takes a lot of dedication to get there. I wonder what his motivation was. I'd like to ask him about it, but how to do it without sounding like a creep? How did you get so hot, coach? No, definitely not like that. I'm really attracted to him, aren't I? I mean, obviously I knew it, but I'm only now starting to grasp it. It definitely makes any potential friendship with him more complicated. Actually, I'm not sure what I see him as. A teacher and an authority figure? A friend or just someone I have the hots for? How do I reconcile all of these things? Thinking about the head pad he gave me just moments before, I feel as if I'm about to melt in the lukewarm water and slide down the drain. It's weird thinking about all this while he's standing right next to me. I wonder if he has any idea. Devin finishes showering first and goes back to the locker room, leaving me alone with my thoughts. Uh, but no matter how hard I think, no answers come to me. Both Devin and Rune are already gone when I come back from the shower. I stood under the stream of water for a long time, regaining my composure. I wipe myself dry and dress quickly. I'm not going to be terribly late for dinner, but it's already after 16 o'clock. My legs are still protesting, but the shower helped a bit. Still, I'd be content with spending the rest of the day sitting. Time to go.
So, they run outside, each holding, yes, a freaking clothes hanger. I sat next to Rune, as Travis already took the spot next to Devin when I got here. They dash towards the car, but as they reach it, the birds swoop down from the sky and attack them. So instead of talking with him, I idly nibble at my portion of rice and mushroom stuffed cabbage rolls. One of them tries to open the car, but obviously the lock is conveniently jammed and he can't. Maybe that's good. I spent most of the morning and a good chunk of the afternoon with him. I don't want to impose with him. Just impose on him. So they fight the vicious, ravaging birds by killing the clothes, by waving the clothes hanging in their general direction, and manage to kill all of them that way. He's been rather quiet the whole dinner. That's probably because Rune is busy talking with Jorgen and I'm sitting far away. Meanwhile, the guy with the key just lazily moves it around in the lock, which is shown in like three separate close-ups. Start talking about films, and Rune turned out to be a fan of grade Z ones. Wow, that's awful. Usually Jorgen is busy, is busy with Lake, but hey, where's Lake? Only now I notice he's not here, which is weird because with his energetic personality, he's a hard to miss. Not as awful as a clapping scene, that one is a sight to behold. I need to show you later, after dinner. It, after I'm done with the project I'm working on. Jorgen? Yeah. Where's Lake? Oh, I don't know. He went somewhere before dinner and hasn't returned yet. Well, that sounds like him. Yeah, although I never thought he'd miss a meal. But he's an adult, he doesn't need me to look after him. If he wants to come and eat, he will. I suppose he's right. Lake eats a lot, but pr definitely isn't a foodie. Maybe he has some snack bars in his room he'll munch on later. I get some crazy ideas sometimes. Maybe he got tangled up in one now. So I can't help but feel a bit concerned. Maybe I should check on him? Should we message Lake or don't? Is, is that the porn one? I'm gonna make a poll because I, I can admit it. The poll's up. Vote. Ah! Don't do that. Fucking where the bones? Ah, no. Let it go, my kitty. Damn, no. Um, no, Jorgen is right. He will come when he wants to. I'm sure he has a watch, and I won't bother him unnecessarily. As Jorgen shifts his attention to Rune again, my thoughts circle back to Devin. Girl, weird how just yesterday my perception of him as a person was completely different. As somewhat stern, mostly silent PE teacher, likely in his 30s, that I tried to steer clear of. Now I know that under that stern exterior, he's a big softy. Interesting how completely off the mark first impressions can be. I, of course, can't say I know him well, but after our yesterday's conversation, I have some better understanding of him. It's time to drink water. When I glance at him, he's looking at his plate. It's I time to drink water. Silence. What his life it's to time to drink like. water. Told me why he moved out, it's time to drink water. Not oh, enjoying the food. He must have noticed me looking because he turns towards me with a subtle but warm smile. My plate is mostly full. I've been too busy thinking and too tired to eat fast.
It's good, I like it. Reminds me of home. Back there we called these... Um, I'm not even going to attempt that. Sorry. Here it's... Not much different. Still getting used to the local cuisine, but this isn't bad. It's not that easy to hear him over laughing and gesticulating rune. So I just nod and get back to nibbling at the food. You look somewhat tense, Arvo. I suppose. The bat is more perceptive than I thought. I have felt a bit on edge since yesterday evening, yeah. And what just happened at the swimming pool definitely didn't help. I must have gotten into a bit of a weird situation. Maybe it isn't weird and I just feel weird about it. Well, I'm here! Did you leave anything for me? Lake. Where were you? Oh, I just lost track of time. What's important is that there's still food left for me. So, what are we having today? I'm famished. The mushrooms and potatoes. Oh no! Not mushrooms. You don't like mushrooms? Mushrooms are very poggers. Um, excuse me for a second. Blake, Blake, never say that again. Blake, what are you talking about? Stop coming up with words that don't exist. They're all squiffy and slimy and just, ugh. I can't stand them. No one forces you to put any on your plate. I, I thought they're inside the, uh, yeah. I, I, I cannot read that. I'm sorry. That must better. I can consume with a piece of mind. I glance one more at the panther, imagining him patting me again. Big padded paw ruffling my fur with his gentle smile, comforting like a dawn chorus on a dark winter morning. They said the name of the game. They said the name of the game. Roll credits. All the emotions swirling around in me makes my head spin. I feel like I need to talk with someone about this or I'll explode. Hey, mushrooms are delicious. Don't. You know what? Go ahead. I don't care. Outside, dark clouds hang heavy above the mountain slopes, casting deep shadows. A bird calls in the distance, a crow or magpie, but I can't see it anywhere. Here, far away from the city, I can almost hear nature speak to me. The soft wind carries the smell of forest and snow, whispering stories about things ancient and true. It all reminds, it all reminds me of all the time spent running through the forest as a kid, spending most of my time outside playing in the dirt. But still, at the back of my mind, I'm thinking of Devin. Do I have a crush on him? Probably. Maybe I just didn't get enough sleep. Also likely. Or the exercise left me so lightheaded, that is definitely a possibility. But if I do, what could I want from him? Listening to the world around me, I silence my thoughts. Something a friend from high school taught me about. A quasi-spiritual practice of breath awareness meditation. Silence the thoughts. Focus on the breathing. Is this Minecraft? Shut down everything else. Melt with the surroundings. I don't count the breaths. I don't try to control them. I just let them happen. Feel the air entering and leaving me. Muscles working in perfect harmony. The borders of my consciousness flutter and blur, and beneath them, there's only a dark abyss that I let in. Soon, I'm nothing but the soft glow, and the wind blows through me freely. There's a door in the back of my mind that I can feel in the dark, but I can't open it. I find it easily this time, but no matter how much I pull, it won't budge. 
But one day I'll succeed again. Not this time, though. Well, at least it worked. I feel much more clear-headed and relaxed now. I'd like to stay here for a while longer, but standing completely still, I'm quickly getting cold. That is very creative. Oh, I know I could get me warm again. We didn't have the time to get in the sauna to get in the sauna after swimming, but I could go by myself now. Pulling my scarf tighter around my neck, I head back to the building. I didn't have time to get sweaty since I showered at since I showered at after the swimming pool, so I just rinsed my fur quickly. This time when I entered the locker room, I stumbled upon Travis and some rather buff, mild mannered moose chatting together. They seemed to be good friends, so I just greeted them and kept to myself, hoping they were here for the swimming pool. Thankfully, as soon as they were done with changing, they ran off there, and I exhaled with relief. Like I'd mind company, but something tells me those two would be rather loud. It's the fourth time I'm here, and it's just the second day of the camp, huh? I bet I'm going to be one of the more frequent guests here. I closed my locker and walked towards the sauna, grabbing a fresh towel from the pile at the entry, the entrance on my way. I hoped that the saunas would be empty, but there's a pair of flip-flops left near the door. wonder who those might belong to. Uh, oh, oh, hello. Oh. One bench since sits the last person I thought I'd walk in on now. Devin. He nods at me and looks away, staring out, staring off out the window into the distance and in the, at the mountains see, steeped in the setting sun. He can't fucking talk. Even though he's sitting on a bench, he has a towel wrapped tightly around his waist. I'm not sure what to do. I didn't expect to see him here out of all the people. It's too late to leave now, though. I keep my towel on and just sit near him, one bench lower. Oh, this is really uncomfortable. Neither of us says anything. I can easily tell Devin is feeling tense, and so do I, although for a different reason. I wonder if he would react like, this, like that to anyone, or is he uncomfortable being half-naked around me? The heat from the stove finally penetrates through my fur and envelops me, warming my skin. I sit back and close my eyes, enjoying the sensation. Are Americans really this queasy about being naked, as if the body was something dirty that has to be concealed? I don't know about other people, but yeah. Being naked in the same room doesn't have to have any sexual connotations. Not for us Finns, at least. Slowly, all the tension I felt when I entered here leaves me, evaporating with the steam. My breathing slows down and my body relaxes. Some more steam would be nice, but I bet it would get too hot for Devin here. I love the peaceful stillness here. It feels as if the intense heat was warping and stretching the delicate fabric of time. Slowly, I forget about all the world about all the world around me until only the sauna and Devin and me remain. I should probably censor this. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the sensor. Yeah, yeah. I glance at Devin again. He still seems tense and embarrassed. At least he's still here. Maybe a bit of talking would help him relax. Devin, you've been to a sauna before, right? A few times. We've had one in the gym in my hometown, but I wasn't a frequent visitor. It wasn't as nice as this sauna. Far from it, actually. There's grippers. Far from it, actually. Wait. Wait a minute. Oh, but have you been to any here in Norway? I went to a public sauna once after I moved here. But I didn't expect to see people sitting in the sauna fully naked. That's not what you usually see in saunas in the U.S., at least not in Ohio. Thank you for keeping the towel on, by the way. It's definitely hard to avoid naked people in a sauna. Good, there's no one else here now. So, how do you like it? I always feel better after a session in a sauna. It's relaxing and soothes muscle pains after some heavy exercise. It's also a great place for thinking. It also has a meditative feel to it. I remember right. Saunas are a huge part of the culture in Finland, right? Yeah, more so than for the other Nordic nations. It's estimated that there's actually around 2.5 million saunas in Finland. It's almost one for every two Finns. Most people use them at least once a week, and many have a sauna in the same building where they live. We have saunas in stadiums, in offices, in embassies. There's even a sauna in our parliament. 
In this fast-paced modern world, it's the one place where it's always tranquil. Interesting. I like saunas, but having them in offices seems a bit much. Not for us. I'm, take I'm talking in English with Norwegians here, too, so sometimes it's easy to forget Devin is a foreigner. Although I don't suppose that living in America is much different, or at least that was always my perception. I've been wondering, how different is the U.S. to Norway? I never talked about it with someone who grew up there. The USA is a huge country, and different states can be almost as different as European countries are compared to each other. Ohio, where I live, is mostly farmlands. And I don't have too many experiences from the rest of the country, sadly. The one thing you'd notice immediately is that the cities in the US are designed with cars in mind, and getting anywhere without them is a struggle. I had problems adjusting at first. Driving here is harder and much less convenient. It took me a while, but I finally found the walkability of Norwegian towns rather nice. I rarely use a car now, as getting anywhere on a bike is simply easier. With the winter approaching, I will probably switch to a car again, although rune vouchers at the public transport here is enough in most cases. Devin wipes sweat off his brow with a heavy sigh. The soft light emanating from the stove nicely accentuates his broad frame and muscles hidden under the black fur. Wondered about it before, but Devin doesn't really look that typical for a Black Panther. He has a rather light-colored fur, especially on his belly, and has clearly visible darker spots. I haven't seen many Black Panthers before, but I know it's unusual. Coach? Er, Devin. Yes? Hope it's not a too personal question, but you're two-species, right? Most no pairings of two animals of different species can produce offspring. Interspecies pairs mostly rely on adoption or in vitro fertilization using material from another member of their species. Seeing someone two-species is rather rare. It's nothing taboo, though, at least not here in Scandinavia. It's quite obvious, isn't it? My mother was also two-species. My grandpa on my mother's side was a lion. That's pretty cool. Cool? That's not the word I'd use. Can you imagine? Living in a conservative state in a town in the middle of nowhere being two-species and a... A fag. That's a word I haven't heard in a long time. I'm so shocked that the gravity of what he's saying takes a moment to hit me. Is that what they were calling him? But I was right, Devin is gay. Is that why you moved out? Well, I moved out because I was tired of having to choose between pretending I'm someone who I'm not and having to fight the whole world. I fought for a while, but I don't want to fight for my whole life. I'm not sure what to say, so I say nothing. Is there really anything one can say after confession like that? I won't even pretend I can imagine what his life must have looked like. Devin looks out the window again, a somber look on his face. What I heard in his voice earlier wasn't sadness, but anger. Anger, resentment, and hesitation? I wouldn't be surprised if I was the first person he has told this to. Times are changing, but some places are changing slower than others. I'm sorry, that was a lot, and uncalled for. No, on the contrary, I appreciate you sharing it with me. I'd like to make him feel better somehow, but there's nothing I can say that would change what he went through. I want to tell him everything will be fine here and he can be himself, but it sounds stupid even in my head. It's almost silly how being born in a wrong place can ruin your life. I don't know about you, but this much heat is enough for me. I need to go cool down. Devin stands up and walks down the row of benches, panting. Huh? Did the lights just go out? The stove is still burning bright, but the lamps are all dark. Huh. This wasn't planned. I better go check what's going on. Devin continues towards the sauna door, keeping his tail low. Are you going to? Oh, yeah. The panther leaves the sauna and I walk out after him. We dry ourselves and then dress in silence. Can't tell if Devin is avoiding eye contact with me or just wants to get to the front desk as quickly as possible. Still, the tension between us is palpable and it worries me. Maybe he's feeling uneasy after dropping such a revelation on me. Can't be sure how big of a thing it was for him. Could he regret opening up to me like that? I wouldn't want this to put a wedge between us. Maybe I should say something? Argo? Devin's voice breaks the silence. It sounds firm and more formal than before. The sound dies down quickly, sucked in by the silence again. Yes? Feels weird being here with no light. It's quiet all around us, too, as if this place was desolate. Being here alone with Devin makes it feel weirder feels like I'm walking on the moon. Devin still looks somewhere in the distance, like he's mulling over what to say. His eyes shine in the darkness like two amber pearls. I'm sorry for unpacking all this on you. It's okay, I understand. It must be hard to carry all that baggage with you. You're the first person I told that here, in Norway. The second person here no that knows about it, 
room figured it out himself. Like this to not be a big deal for me, but it still is. Well, it gets easier with time and practice if that helps. I'd say it faster than I can think it through. Though, I think it's fair that Devin knows this about me as well. And maybe it will stop being a big deal for me too. Do you mean? Well, yeah. Oh, I didn't know. It's not like it changes much, but my coming out a bit less awkward now, doesn't it? For both of us, yeah. It's a nice feeling knowing that someone else who's doing someone else who's just outing himself. Even if he's my teacher, but also my friend? Ready? Time for us to go. I nod and leave the room with Devin. I'd hope that the light would come back quickly, but it's been, what, five minutes now at least? I'd be something more serious. You'd think they'd have power generators in a guest house like this, but maybe power outages are so rare here that they don't need them. Or maybe they just didn't turn them on. Where is everyone? It's dark all around. Only the emergency exit signs shine with their greenish glow as if they were floating in the void. Likely in the rooms or in the cafeteria. In case of an emergency, one of the professors should have gathered everyone from the corridors there. Or something awful happened really here alone. Expect to see some of the professors with torches here, though. It is not school anymore. Everyone here is an adult. They'll be fine. A movement inside the corridor ahead of us catches my eye. It's dark enough that I can barely see the shadowy silhouette lurking in the darkness. Hello? Is there anyone here? I try to make out its shape in darkness, but something doesn't seem right with it. It has two heads? The light comes back, and before us in the middle of the corridor stands Lake with Rune hiding behind him. Rune, you're cruffing my thighs! It's you! The light is back! Rune, Lake, what are you two doing out there? He just went out to see what's happening. Why are you walking without a flashlight, though? Well, I don't have one. You don't have one in your phone? Oh. I thought it would be more fun without any light. But you remembered and you didn't tell me? Is everything okay? You ought to be pretty out there not to think about using your phone. I'm all fine now, thanks. I just don't like this kind of situations. Anyway, it's good that the power is back, but I should go and check out what happened. Before I can react, Devin marches away in the direction of the lobby. My first impulse is to follow him, but then I think that he might not want me to. Uh, something wrong with him? Rune, I think we could gather everyone back and continue playing. I don't know if I want to. Where are you playing? Never have I ever. Ooh, Arvo, you have to join up too. I have to do a method that we're meeting up at the common room, but they never replied. That had to be when I was on my walker already in the locker room. I haven't checked my phone since dinner. Maybe I should do that more often, at least on this trip. Sorry, I never saw it. I think I need a breather from all this. Some lighthearted fun should do me some good after the whole day of emotional roller coasters. If that sounds good, I'll gladly go. How about you, Rune? Yeah, I really need to go, sorry. Besides, these games were even more stressful than the project I'm working on, so I'd rather pass. Blake, what did you do to him? Nothing. Even just some playful tea thing. I apologized already. Yes, but the damage was already done. See you later. See ya. So, throughout the two of us. Let's go then, before it's time for Thopper. I step into the cafeteria with unsteady gait, the alcohol still coursing through my veins. Walking towards the table with food, I almost stumble into some other student who's walking to a table with a plate. God damn it, Lake, it's the last time I play any drinking game with this lion. I swear, he was deliberately coming up with things to make me drink. I didn't even suspect he knew this much about me. Good thing I'm not yet drunk, just a bit uncoordinated. I grab a plate too and sit at an empty table not far from the entrance. I'm not really even hungry, but I know I should eat something before the end of the day or wake up completely drained tomorrow. There's an unpleasant knot in the pit of my stomach, though, and even though the food looks nice, I don't really have any appetite. I stare for a moment at the slice of fruit tart before pushing the plate away from me and leaning back on the chair. Never have I ever had a crush on my teacher. Does Lake know? How would he think of that if he didn't? I really do have a crush on him, don't I? I feel like banging my head on the table. Why, Arvo? Why would you get a crush on someone 10 years older than you? Your coach on top of that. Maybe that's just the way I am. My precious crush was my age. But that was long ago. My previous crush was my age, but that was long ago, and it was my first high school love. I don't think that counts. Oh, no. 
Now it all makes sense. <gasps> I'm into guys that are older than me. Now that I think about it, I even usually look at porn with guys who look like they're in their 30s. There's so much about myself that I don't know yet. Why aren't you eating? I look up from the plate and see Rune standing at the other side of the table, his brows furrowed in a look of concern. Just got lost in thoughts. I didn't notice him approaching at all. Maybe I'm a bit more drunk than I thought. Pull the plate closer and cut myself a piece of the tart with a spoon. Quick sustenance before heading back to the party. Oh no, I'm done playing. Got a bit too personal. Yeah, I get that. I had enough after a few rounds too. Can I sit here? Sure. Go ahead. Thanks. By the way, how's my friend Devin going? I almost put up the piece of tart I'm chewing on. I take it's going well considering you were coming back from the swimming pool earlier. Sauna, actually. And it's going pretty good, I guess. Sauna, really? I talked him into going once and he didn't really like it. Said he didn't feel too comfortable there. That's good. I'm happy he's opening up. Rune leans in and lowers his voice, getting all serious all of a sudden. But if you hurt this man, I'm going to have to kill you. Be good to him, he deserves some kindness. His eyes seem cold as steel. Chill, how could I hurt him? <laughs> Just saying, I don't think you will. I'm joking, of course. Anyway, I'd better be going. Got something planned for the evening. Lancer runes plated. It. It's already empty while I still barely touched mine. Wow, he must really be in a hurry. Still working on that project? No, that's done. Took me some time, but I got what I need for now. Right, I don't think he'd be this happy to go work on a project for the university. See you tomorrow, then. Good night. I deflate in my seat, exhaling and rubbing my temples. While we were talking, the cafeteria emptied almost entirely. Maybe it wasn't such a brief conversation. Alcohol distorts the flow of time quite significantly, after all. Mindlessly, I take a few more bites of the food while looking out the window, into the darkness that covers the mountains. Then I notice my own reflection staring at me, like another version of me observing me closely. Wish I was sober. Someone enters the cafeteria and I glance in their direction. It's Devin. We're gonna leave off here tonight. I know it's early, but... I just gotta... yeah. <sighs> yeah, I know. Well, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.